All right, this is the fourth one of these I'm fixing today. The XTI 1000 and the DSI 1000 and 2000 are all essentially the same amp, just slightly different connectors on the end. When they go bad, this capacitor fails. It's rated 35 volts. I've tracked higher voltages on that and that's why they fail. So I replace it with a 50 volt equivalent and they work like new for at least a few more years. But right now their DOA won't power on. I've already done three in a row today. Figured I'd film this last one because the hardest part really is taking it apart. The rest is super easy. One thing you want to check for if it has been powered up recently, make sure there is no voltage across these two heat sinks. I already know there's not, but just to double check, 0, 0.0, I can touch it, we're golden. Now, easiest way to get to those screws down there, cut here and here, pop that piece of foam out. We're done with the razor, and now you can get to these four. These don't need to come all the way out. In fact, if you take them all the way out, it's a real bitch to get them back in place in between these little heat sink things. I'm not gonna get into super detail here. I'm just showing how ridiculously easy these are to repair. To get these broken loose, go and get rid of this RF shield. It's two screws. Keep all my screws in one little pile, even though there are different ones. I've done this so many times, I know what goes where. Set this aside. Now, let's get this front panel off. Pull the little connector off the main board. Put that forward, front panel gone, out of the way. Power switch, the little plastic extender, you might want to take that and put it out of the way. Now, Board screws, one, two, three, one, two, three. Take them out. Set them aside. That one I tend to leave there because it usually will stay right in that hole. The rest of them, you know, I don't want to bounce it around and they're easy to grab. So you get rid of those. Real quick, like. Plug the fan, by the way. Now on the XTI, you also have to disconnect a daughter board over here and the four output terminals. This one, the output terminals are part of the board, so they come with it. Now, because the XTI has speak ons, this guy, and XLRs, there are a lot more rear screws that need to come out. We're going to start with the larger. Uh, what are these? T20, T20s, yeah. Those are T15s, by the way. Every screw up until now, T15s. So we take these T20s, they're all plastic screws. Screws meant to go into plastic. Two around the power connector, one on the binding posts. Now, those out of the way, let's switch to our tiny little T8. That's for your speak on connectors. There are four of these screws. Again, none of these are present on the DSi series. However, when you look at the, the uh, motherboard, circuit board, there is a place for all of this, meaning the only difference is what they put on. The amps are the same. So we're done with that. Now we need a number one Phillips. Get these four screws that support the XLR connectors. Probably these should have come out first, but I've just got it down to a routine where I pop the top first But once you get all of these clear one more to go You'll see how easy it is to pop this board out now again. We've already made sure I'm clearing my space here. We've already made sure that everything's discharged on this now rather than try to pick it straight up We're going to take it slide it forward And the hardest part is these binding posts. If you try to come up, these are gonna grab the edges of the board and you end up twisting it and you don't wanna do that. Set that aside. Now, the part we are replacing 
the part that goes bad on these, this little ass capacitor. Right next to the power switch, C196. We're just gonna pull that out. And being careful not to damage any of that stuff. I've done this too many times to care. I've got a big stack of these repaired and ready to go back into service. Oh, do come on. Helps have a clean soldering tip. That was a little don't try this at home type thing. Old capacitor gone. I could take the time to use the suction tool and try to, you know, <laughs> if I could hold it in my hand, use the suction tool to try to clear the solder from the hole. You can see that this is tedious, time consuming, and hardly worth it because it almost never really clears the hole. We're not going to bother. Um, if you remember before we pulled it out, negative side was toward the power switch. Now the positive leg is always longer, so I always put that in first. Get that pad heated up. I could have clipped those a little bit first, but I just tend to do it this way. Get that in. A little bit more. Get the negative terminal and its little hole, heat that solder pad. Be careful not to overheat these pads and separate them from the board. Now you, then you have a whole new problem altogether. And we're not getting into that because we're not doing that. Just gently heat the pad, both pads, until the whole capacitor slides down flush with the board. Does it have to be flush? Probably not. These are not high frequency components, but you see how once you heat them up, slides right in. Bend one up, one down, until I do it. Make sure it stays in place. A little dab of solder on each at the pad. Just a, just a tiny little bit. Make sure it bonded completely with the pad and the terminal. That little excess solder on the lead is fine because we are about to take our diagonal cutters and rid the excess lead. Now, at this point, this amp will power right up, just like as if it were new. But because I'm so confident, we're going to slap it back together and then come down. I was not very careful. Let's see how I bent that very carefully. It'll all go back together once you get all the screws in, so no big deal. But because I was trying to do this in a rush, I did kind of bend the fine parts. Now these, this takes a little finagling, especially on the XTI, because you have all these different things that need to line up with these rear holes. I'm hoping the camera can see that, but there we are. This is a little back, but once we put that screw in, it'll pull itself tight. Now, you want to kind of push it to where, when you look at all the screw holes, are pretty well centered. At that point, let's go ahead, let's go ahead and switch to our T, oh heck, where was it? <laughs> Did I misplace a torch? Pin? No, I didn't. There it is. Our T15. Now, the important reason you want to make sure there's no voltage here is because in operation, one of these is plus 30 volts and one is minus 30 volts. When you get to the 2000s and up, the higher wattage models, they've got what's called a tracker power supply that can go as high as plus and minus 90 volts. So that's 90 volts between here and the chassis, and 180 volts between the two. So even so much as touching your screwdriver from here to the chassis screw that we're putting in right now causes a pretty big little flash and potentially damages the whole thing. So you don't want to do that. Now that other screw over here, it did end up falling out. No big deal. It's just in a kind of tight spot here. It's not so bad on the 1000. Notice there appear to be a lot of missing parts. 
open up a 2000 watt and you'll see it very much full in comparison. And I like to kind of bounce around, alternate, sort of like a torque sequence, but jump to the front corner, get that guy in, go to this back corner, uh, try not to do that. And uh, by the way, these screws are brass, so a magnetic screwdriver does you no good. But you can kind of hold it while it's locked into the little threads of the Torx bit, and there we go. Now there are two more, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy. Uh... I was trying to make this as quick a video as possible without having to speed it up in the editing. I wanted this all one, one cut, one long shot. So, the main difference again between the XTI and DSi. XTI has your standard XLR speak on and binding post connectors. It's what you would expect to find in say a DJ amplifier or just a general PA amplifier, whereas the DSi series are intended for movie theaters, cinemas. And again, the only real difference is the type of connector. They use Phoenix connectors for the input and what they call barrier strip, which is just your screw terminals for the outputs. Um, one of these, let's get this RF shield in place. And the only, the other difference would be the fact that the XTI has presets, sorry, the DSi, the movie theater one, has presets specifically designed to made up with certain JBL theater speakers. So they're sort of in cahoots, if you will. Oh, don't forget to put the little plastic extender back on your power switch and put it on the right way. Without that, you won't be able to easily turn it on. Now, you line this back up, get it into place, make sure that power switch is peeking through the little hole, and the front is on. Now, what holds this front on? Nothing but a little bit of torsion. When you put the top cover on, no, we're not ready for that. There is one other little step. We need to replace this and we don't want this sliding around it probably won't but just to be safe I like to take a little bit of my two-sided tape just one little piece is all it takes that's all that's under these sides a little piece of this pop it on there peel the thing off stick that in place that'll keep it from moving also the top cover is going to put pressure on that you see the outline I don't know if you can see it where this literally touches that, so none of this dust accumulates there. So pressure will also hold that into place. Now you just line this back up, make sure you're caught over the outside edges, and then that is the torsion that holds the front in place. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the three machine screws. I always start with the back one, because it'll pull the cover into place and then the two sides and then all we have are all those back screws sometimes you gotta make sure it's snapped into place don't ever force it don't ever don't ever use one of these on any sensitive electronics never if you're that lazy, then you're working on the wrong thing. Because all you're gonna do is cause serious damage. So, final screw in place. Now, we've got all these outside screws, but before I even put it together the rest of the way, just a quick demonstration, right speaker, plus these binding posts make this pretty quick and easy. Minus and left speaker. And right now I have, I think, Metallica playing on the computer, which is fed through these XLR cables. Be careful, if you ever plug these in without those screws 
be very careful. Now, make sure that switch is off. The switch is a little sticky. I should have put a tiny dab of WD-40 on it, but power's there. Turn our gain down. Now we're gonna hit the power button. It takes a few seconds, it's gonna do its little blip. Then it's gonna do a whole sequence. Kicks on, says DSP off. Now we're gonna turn the gain up just a little. It still takes a few minutes. These do that intentionally so as not to cause too big of a surge on power. But there we are. All right, before I get a copyright infringement there. But there we are. That's how you fix one of these very common DSI and XTI amplifiers. So there it is.